autumn kicks in, it's the perfect time of year to wrap up warm, fill a flask full of, well, tea, I suppose, really, and see some of the UK's most beautiful stately homes. But with such a rich variety of history on offer, where do you begin? Here to give some recommendations is our resident history expert, Kate Williams. <laughs> All of it. Wonderfully scary. Amazing. I enjoyed that. I quite saw the show. I was miles away. Yes, because I, I guessed what you drew. You, you guessed you as know well. what I guessed and what? I got it wrong. What? So I, obviously Catherine has no rival in me. I thought it might be a flower. No, it's too <laughs> obvious, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's Rachel, too obvious. Yeah, so there we Stay go. Stately homes, though, I'm a huge fan. I love going around them, great with imagining what it might be to live there. Um, I do have a favourite myself. There's got to be Chatsworth in the Derbyshire Peaks because, I mean, it's got so much on offer, hasn't it? It's incredible. Yeah? Chatsworth is so beautiful and it, it goes back so far as well. It's got this incredible story right back to 1549. So it was bought by Bess of Hardwick, who was the most powerful woman after Elizabeth I. And she had four husbands, which, of course, Elizabeth I had none. So you could say that she rather was better than her, maybe. <laughs> and she, she started off building this fantastic huge house and, and it really did become an incredible 18th century mansion and, and open, it didn't open to the public till 10 years after the Second World War. Mm. And that, in that year, they got first year, they got 100,000 visitors despite petrol rations, so pretty impressive. God. They do an amazing thing at Christmas now. You know, they dress the house for Christmas and they have to run the house Christmas decorations, I think, right through to the middle of January because so many people so queue down the road. And it's lit by candles too, you know. A house like that, to see it now lit, by candlelight, which it was at the time. It's it's beautiful inside and out. And of course, you probably pop in all the time for tea. And Not all the time. But wander I'm... around the hundred acres of gardens. <laughs> It's, it's a most beautiful spot. And because the landscape's by Capability Brown, you know, at any time of year, you can wander through the park and just, just enjoy it. But the house is brilliant. They're very hospitable. That's the hunting tower right up on the top of the yes, moor Yes, built there. in the 1580s. And so that was a really, really... I mean, it's rather an impressive hunting well, tower, you can rent it, it and, and live and stay in it. You know, well, it's one of those marvellous. places. Yes. Yeah, and great views. Do so you think Mary, Queen of Scots, also was in prison there? And, you know, even her apartments are still called the Mary, Queen of Scots apartments. Mm. I'm very fond of the Chatsworth gift yeah. shop, although, of course, Alan, you're, you're too busy to go in gift shops, I'm sure. Marvellous. Well, your choice, your <laughs> choice is Castle Howard. That's your number one, then. I, I really like my Castle native Howard. Yeah. I think it's an incredibly beautiful house and so celebrated because it was a, it was a set for Brideshead with visitors. So, the first one, yeah. So the first yeah. one. So beautiful. But it, what, what really fascinates me is that the third of Earl of Carlisle said, I'm going to build myself a big house, because this is what you do if you're an Earl. So when <laughs> we're both uh, you're an, we're Earl and Duchess... When, we'll I'm say, an Earl, yeah, when okay. you're saying Earl, I just want to build a really massive house. So he said, I'm going to choose... Who I'm going to choose to build my house? Uh, the best playwright I can think of. <laughs> Which is such a kind of strange idea, isn't it? Thinking Vanbra. Yes, in Vanbra, yeah. rather than saying, "Oh, okay, I'll choose an architect," he chooses a playwright. So he chooses Vanbra, who becomes, who really, he launches his career. Who goes on to build so many of our houses. Mm. Vanbra is this marvelous person, but they, they kind of clash. So they get the east wing built, but they can't decide on the west wing. They spend thousands of pounds, and both men die before the house is finished. So his son-in-law oh. has to go on to do the west wing. Yeah. So. Uh, it's hard work building a mansion. It is. Well, no, there's that wonderful Atlas fountain there that you look across the pool to. But nothing is more, you know, mega, more massive, and given as a reward by the nation to the Duke of Marlborough is Blenheim. Blenheim. What a place. I was just there last week having to battle past the amazing-looking scones. It was so... <laughs> it was hard for me. 1704, it was given to the, the first Duke of Marlborough for beating the French, so that's what we've got to do. We've got to beat the French yeah. to, get, to get one. <laughs> I'm not entering into this political <laughs> I don't know how we can do it. International I don't So he built them in, beat them in battle. Queen Anne was so pleased, she said, have, a, have this house. And she helped, she gave them the money till 1712 until they all fell out of favour. Mm. And then they moved into it in the 18th century. So it just expanded this, you know, gigantic And there's another capability house. around landscape there. You know, I'm always interested in houses that, not only beautiful house, which does interest me, but the fact that it sits well in its surroundings. Amazing. Again, Blenheim is another one that has the most beautiful surroundings. Trees, parkland, lakes, you know, dammed streams Swans. to make lakes. It's also in seven... Yeah. The actual house itself is seven acres of it, so... Seven acres of house. Seven acres of house, so a little bit bigger than perhaps our houses. <laughs> it's the most wonderful stone. It seems to sort of shimmer in the sun. It's this really warm, honey-coloured stone there at Woodstock, just outside Oxford. Very beautiful. And, yeah. of course, Winston Churchill was born there in 1874, our, our great Prime Minister. He, would have, he, he was... His, his, the uncle was the earl, so mm. he was only, only got, got anywhere near getting the house if the uncle hadn't had children. Mm. But, uh, and he always went back there and is buried quite close. Well, he... He proposed to Clementine Hosier there as well, didn't he? There's a lovely story. They were in a summer house in the garden 
and she's in the summer house with him and they're sitting there and she saw Beetle apparently walking across the floor <laughs> and she said to herself, if he doesn't propose to me before that Beetle has got to the other side of the summer house, I'm leaving. <laughs> and he did, so it was all yeah, right. So yeah. lucky, lucky the Beetle was kind of slow. It is. <laughs> <laughs> speed it up. The right speed of Beetle. So are you, do you, do we kind of thinking from that that maybe Churchill had taken his time to propose to Clementine? I think he was a, a considered man as, well as, a considered being an, as well as being an impetuous one. So no doubt we're spot for choice when it comes to stunning stately homes to visit. My thanks to Kate Williams. Thank you, Kate. Good to see you. Thank you.